Now I'm going to do something that very few people would think I should do, and uh, maybe I shouldn't, but I'm going to do it anyhow. I'm going to scrape right over top of the letter in here, right over top of Rhode Island Red, and uh, I'm going to try to do it without affecting the lettering whatsoever. Now it's got a black bristle in it right here from the previous varnish job and it's got some runs above it up in here and I'm going to try to scrape all of that out at the same time here. We just thin that bristle right up and then all of a sudden it just disappears. And you can see that the runs just appear very quickly as soon as you scrape over them so I can concentrate in that area some more and we'll flatten that right out. I can feel it right underneath the razor blade, just getting flatter and flatter every stroke I make at it. Scrape right over the lettering. Look at this, look at this side here. Watch it disappear. As soon as I scrape over it, then the show runs all over the place. So it would seem a little dangerous to scrape over the lettering like that, but there is a technique involved. And like I said, you just drag in the scraper and it's tipping the thing so it doesn't dig in and when you reverse direction it tips the other way and it's actually quite safe. You get momentum going before you touch down. A puddle on there. Surprising how hard it is to remove that. Yeah. Now I finally got underneath it and it's gone. So we've just finished up scraping it with the utility knife blade and we've gotten almost all the runs all scraped right off of it. And now we're going to switch over to sanding it. Now I've got a sheet of 320 wet and dry here and I'm going to show you how I fold it and why. I folded it straight across the middle like so and then ripped it halfway across the middle. You fold one side over, the other side over like so and the other side like that. And the reason for this is so that none of the abrasive surfaces are touching each other, so the paper lasts a lot longer. And you've got four layers here rather than one, and uh, it makes it a little bit stiffer, so it sands a little bit flatter. And this is how people used to use it uh, when they were doing car body work, and that's the same way I'm doing it. So now, we're just gonna hold it right in our fingers. We don't have any rubber blocks or anything like that, or any power. And we're just going to go over it lightly. You can see the remaining part of whatever runs there is there. And we're going to sand it for quite a bit until that all disappears. So I'm sanding it mostly with the grain, but it slows down as you go along. And every once in a while, you kind of want to cross hatch it a little bit. And that helps it cut a lot faster when you switch back to sanding with the grain. So that's the way I do it. I'm trying to make some headway here. I'm not pleased with, with going very, very slowly. I'm trying to get it done. So I'm cross hatching it a little bit like so. It helps the material move much quicker. Now I can switch sides on my sandpaper anytime I want. I'll bang it, clear it out, and it all helps. So I've been working at this one spot quite a bit because it was really quite a mess right there. I still got some problems with it up top here, but it's starting to go away now. So I'm just finishing up sanding here and I've hand sanded the whole transom nice and gently because you can be very nice and gentle with your hands and with a piece of paper this fine, but I wouldn't really want to go at this with an electric sander because the sander can heat the thing up a little bit and across it, it cross hatches it around in circles like this. Not very good, so this is the way to go. Okay, so we're gonna apply the first coat of varnish. Now this is Jamestown Distributors Total Boat Lust. It's a varnish that's designed to build up in many coats, whether you sand in between or not. 
and it can be coated over in a very short amount of time. So the first thing you're going to do is get started over here on the right hand side. And uh, this is straight out of the can, no thinning or any additives or anything. So you can see we taped off the plank in there because I just want to be able to go quickly and just disregard completely any of the details around the edges if I can. So I'm brushing right out onto the tape and we're just going to remove the tape later. And what I'm doing is I'm starting to my right and varnishing my way to the left. And uh, I think the biggest enemy here is to get too much varnish on there. So what I'm doing is I'm continually tipping back out onto the varnish I've got, trying to feel if it's too thick or not. And if it is, I'm dragging it over to the left. And like I say, I'll just reach back every so often here without going too far and tip a little bit. And I'm going to tip onto the dry so that it just deposit some of the varnish onto the dry and keep cleaning the brush to a certain extent. That way I can feel what I've got going on and I can make sure that I don't put too much varnish. The last thing we want is to have it come out looking like it did. So the enemy is too much varnish. You get too much varnish, it's going to run. And you have to keep a wet edge. In other words, you have to go back into that wet varnish and make sure that you get to it before it dries, because otherwise you're going to get start and stop marks. And that wouldn't be right either, so. That's it. So we just finished the first coat of matte finish high build varnish and we've let that dry for a little while and we're just about ready to add another coat. We're going to have five coats or so of this matte finish varnish before we're done. Then we'll give it a nice light sanding and then one coat of a gloss varnish over the top.